So this is a meeting of the basically the emergency management team on Wednesday, September 11th at 4 p.m. at the town offices. We have Fran Fortino, uh, JP Kennedy, and Mike Archibald on as uh, Zoom members. And the purpose of today's meeting is to discuss some emergency management plans. So, um, I had emailed everybody the plan, the plan, the long plan. Um, that is basically a template provided by NEMA that they feel is important to have that content in the plan. So then you just have to add the things that are particular to your town. So I went through it, added the stuff that was way specific that I could add at this point. Um, there were some parts of it that I could not do. I either could, I needed to find that information like uh, accessibility and things like that of our residents. Um, um, so, did anybody get a chance to look it over? A little bit. Yes, I need like some sections, so okay. um, it's pretty. Um, the plan itself is pretty basic. It's not vague. It, I mean, it's vague. It's there's not specifics in like a how to do um, everything in it. The only thing it is specific on is who whose responsibility it is to call an emergency, whose responsibility is to enact the emergency, and who, what are the members of the emergency team, basically. Um, I didn't make copies for everyone because it's such a- Yeah, I'm working with 16 H doc. Did you send it to my email? Because I know, I, I oh, think okay. I'm okay. yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah Sorry, at least I can pull it up while we're sitting here. I can do that. Perfect. Okay. Should be coming your way. Um, so I did highlight some sections in it, in my uh, that I needed some help from you guys to to help with. So. Get back into it. If I was to do the plan, I'd probably shrink it down to about half. <laughs> <laughs> well, is there a requirement that we have to use all elements of the plan? They they need to accept it. Okay. Um, so the easiest way to get them to accept it is to use their template. Okay. Um I mean there were some sections I I did leave out. I um uh, they had two different organizational charts. And historically, we've always kind of been under a police, police does this, fire does this, highway does this, um, rather than the incident command system where it's logistics, planning, oh, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, it seemed more practical in a small event to have it set up as each department submitting stuff. And then I, I did add into their 
table, I did add a financial person into it just because if it's a true emergency, you need somebody to compile all the finances. I mean, all these guys have been really great about especially winter snowstorms. I think Keith has that down pat on uh, coming up with all the expenses related to, because you can charge up equipment under certain, when the state allows for, you can charge up equipment, you can charge up staff as long as it's overtime, we can't charge at regular time, but we've got it pretty well down. We have a pat with it. <laughs> Um, so let me get into here into the first my first question. This is my computer that's broken. Okay, the first few few pages were just signature pages. So once it it's we get it close to being finalized, then we'll go ahead and I'll update those sections. Um Page number seven. Okay. Um, on page on page nine of the actual plan, they talk about um, access and functional needs. So. Years ago, um, we had I had sent a, a letter out to all the residents asking them to totally voluntary because we right. can't ask them to do anything other than that. Um, a voluntary list of if they if there was an emergency and we needed to evacuate, would they need help? And if they had any disabilities that may cause a problem with getting them help, like if they were you know, if we're calling people in their death, that's not going to work. If we're, um, you know, getting people to walk to a certain site and they're in a wheelchair, that's not going to work. So I had sent a, a letter to everybody and made a list. But of course, that list is terribly out of date. And I think Jim might keep a little bit of something similar. But I did um, make up a, a new letter that I'd like to mail out to everybody that's very similar to the old one that just asks if they could voluntarily put their information down at the bottom um, so that we can add them to a list. And I did say that it would be confidential only to be used in an emergency by the fire police and emergency management. So I would like to send that out to all households in town to did get an updated list. Did you find good response when they I had a mail? Yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I probably had because we could do it that, online form so that they just go and fill it out online. I thought about that, but people don't always pay attention, and I'd rather know that it went to every household okay. and then it's like. They chose oh. not to answer it. Yeah, I was still thinking you send them oh, a letter, but there's a link on the letter yeah. to go to that. Yeah, it's not terribly detailed, but I just wasn't sure if like the oh I need to fill this out, put it in the mail. Yeah. Not that those are extremely no, when we get it back, then we have to do the data entry. So if you haven't do yeah. it already, yeah. Yeah. That's half the battle. True. That's that's true. If somebody has the technology to do that, I don't because yeah, we have to, to, we have Microsoft Forms, and so we can okay. I can easily set up a form okay. and create a link for you, okay. and then it creates a spreadsheet based on the data entry that they put in. You keep it anonymous. Okay. So okay I, but I think good. you are putting like address rights. That well, you, we know. you need yeah. to know where they where yeah. find. You have to know. So you so have to know who they are. Yeah. But, yeah. but we don't have name. Do we? Lift. I usually did collect names. <laughs> Is that Mike or Fran? It's JP. Oh, JP. Hey, um, hey, that's all right. Um, how often will that database be updated? And what's the plan going to be to try and keep it current? Yeah, that's the that's the issue. I I would like to pro probably send it out yearly. Um, okay. Oh yeah, like a, with the annual census. Yeah. Yeah, maybe with the census. That's what I did the first time. Oh, I, sure. it out. Yeah. I sent it with the census, yeah. but I wasn't quite ready to do that this year. Um, 
and it, plus the census was under my hat at the time. So <laughs> um, it, well, as long as it doesn't add postage to the census, yeah, that's the big thing. I think if depending it's on what, page, yeah, if it's one more page, you shouldn't. Mm -hmm. um, so I can ask Amy about that if she'd let us. Is go. there any reason that we can't wait? Till the we waited from this wait, one, can it would be too late. 15 years, so um, as long as it's been that long. I think it was 15 years. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, because a lot of the people on that list well, imagine are that. no longer on around. I would imagine Triad probably has a little record of some information too. Perhaps, yeah, I think like, Jim was kind of keeping it. Hospital lists, something like that, they know yeah. that who they check on. I think we do was kind of keeping an informal list, yeah. but nothing. And we kind of have like uh, with IMC, like each house will be like, oh, you'll need three people to help with this person. Okay. Like, yeah. So we kind of have that, well, that based on be... the house. But I don't know if we can pull that individually. It's just kind of like a note where we. But that may be the place where we right. hold all of this. Right. Because if we type in an address, we can see what the issues are with the address. I'll talk to Jim a little bit more right. about that. I'm wondering if it can do a region. Like if we needed to e evacuate due to a flood or something like on River Road. Connecticut River is we know, could pull up depends how we I don't know how we enter it. But if it was a hazard, you could pull up all the hazards for the street. So it's definitely one river road, we just put river road and it will include everything. Oh, so you can all the hats. I believe so. Okay. Don't quote me on it. But we have so that may be the ideal place to keep this. Does that already exist? And yeah. Yeah, that's also how we do lock boxes for a house. So if we have a, a lock box oh, to get yeah. a key, that information's in the in the computer. So I can say, okay, there it is. Like, yeah. That. Can you um would you have to create different categories like if some if you, I, I don't know. I guess we're gonna get yeah, into something. Okay, that, that would be. I think that that would probably be the easiest because it already exists. Yeah. But we just need that data from people say, okay, right. that's what we'll enter. So, that sounds great. I think that's a the way to go. And then Jim will say, why'd you volunteer me for this? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. 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 I'll, I'll you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> so no, but I think that's an an ideal. Uh, because then the fire side has access to it. Does the fire side have access to that, JP? Oh, he went on. No, I can I can hear you. Um, I would have to explore into that a little bit more. Um, okay. I well, at least our our dispatch would have it. So okay, because yeah. um, that way, you know, if we had to evacuate River Road, what we'd probably do first is send out a robocall. To the river road evacuating everybody but knowing that if we have a list of people who might need additional assistance then you can go to that and and gather the information on those individuals that would need the additional yeah, assistance. That's the option we have to figure out how to do that it might be an option maybe Maybe a flag of some sort. Something. Even, yeah, so. some kind of hazard. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So in the plan, it talks about access and functional needs. And that was one area that I wasn't able to, but I think we might be having might have a solution to that. Um and then also the language part, this whole area. Uh, I'm not quite sure how many. I pulled this information from some data source, and I'm from not like terribly the, confident. Base, yes, or the yeah. Yeah. I'm not terribly confident in the the information there. So we might talk to probably Jim and you would know more about who might have language barriers. And the only thing I'm thinking of is probably the farms. Yeah. Uh, the new the new one you see is uh, Haitian Creole. Haitian Creole. Creole. Coming into Yankee Candle. Okay. Yeah. As far as um, residents, right? I mean, people who live here generally, as right. I think it's mainly the farms. I think the Polish population has pretty much. Yeah, you know, most of the Polish no, people speak, speak English. Right. Um, Jamaican, and we have Jamaican, Guatemalan. Yeah. yeah. So those are the ones That's that so we would have to. Stuff. Yeah. 
to uh, to work at. So I will update that section once I get that information. Um, the other part, uh, the tier two facilities. Um, I do have three tier twos that I've gotten the information from, and JP has too. So, um, and that's Cabestro, Yankee Candle, and Berkshire Gas. Um, so I've got those tier three, those three tier threes, but my my guess is that there should be others. So we might need to start thinking about approaching <clears throat> some of those other businesses. I would think that there must be some farms that should have Norse. Norse would Money. definitely be on so there. Oh, DM Lynn? Yeah. Hey Lynn. Um D DMC has uh, tier two reporting that they've submitted as well. I've given oh, those to Dan. Okay. Uh, okay, I didn't get that one. So, she, um, okay. but there are a few other uh, there are a few other places in town that um, we should work to get. Jim gave me gifts. Oh, right. gifts. So that's a list of all the sites within our database. Okay. For the town. And then I'm just looking through here some businesses and okay. farms, things like that. Just as contacts that, that might play into what we're talking yep. about. Now, so yep. yeah. That's from our database or dispatch database. So okay. all the sites might be some of the work off and say yes, no, yes, no. Yeah, actually, this one is one I gave them. Okay. okay. All right. <laughs> That's okay. Um but that was that for that was that's the master list was all just pinned together here. So okay. Um, so that is a section that will need some work. Up and I mean we can still do the plan and that's a work in progress. Yep. You know. Um, so and the other thing is how much do we a lot of this plan is going to be public for the public and information. How much of this plan do we really want to make public? If you take for bits and pieces of it, like I would probably take a lot of the tier two specifics. I wouldn't put the actual tier two data and make it public. I might list the companies that would supply a tier two, but I don't want people to know what kind of chemicals the general public to know what kind of chemicals they're holding. Um, the other option is to, to, to be very vague and just say we have four companies that have filed tier two and keep the data itself in another location. Um, I know that, uh, like, um, they say blast, we always try to keep that under wraps because you don't know who's going to be looking right, at this right, land. Right. So you kind of want to keep some information confined to just the town. So we'll have to uh, determine how we're going to put those out there and whether we're going to include them in the plan or not. Well, what data are we putting in the plan that you feel is already public? Well, I'm just thinking, if you describe it as a tier two, a company as a tier two, do we actually want to list the companies and let people know that, oh, they're a tier two, they're holding chemicals? Or you list the company, but you just don't put any of the chemical information next to it. Oh, um, or even like DMC. I mean, you don't necessarily need to let everybody know what they do there. Right, right. I mean, a lot of people know, no. but you Not don't everybody. have to publicize. My, my pessimistic vote, vote would be don't include it at all. Keep well, you, you have to keep well, it separate for keep, the town. Well, you can say keep it for us, but not public. Okay, then I can put something yeah. like just say, hey, we have four facilities. Four tier yeah. two. Yep. businesses yeah. yep. and which we we track their sure. you know or something like that why, why give someone even an idea of what's there it's, right exactly yeah. and we'll keep that information separately sure. 
Um. <laughs> <laughs> You're mean, baby. <laughs> uh, okay. You're and, breaking up, Pete. I ooh, the. <laughs> and the plan plan does right allow down? for keeping things private, so uh, <laughs> that's fine. Uh, does anybody know how many gallons the storage tank is on for the water department? Five hundred thousand. Five hundred thousand. <laughs> so we have two. We have two. Of them. This one. I couldn't remember how much it was, and I left it blank. So, um, but Is, are you under the critical facilities? I am under. Yeah. Yeah. Utility critical 12. facility page twelve. Because yeah. I think we should add in the. The new booster station okay. on Chestnut Plain. Did I put that in? You got the boot. You got the. the uh, oh, I didn't put it. Uh, so you only have the water it. tank off of Chestnut Plain, though. Is oh. how you. Water. Is the water is provided by Wells just up at Chestnut Plain, Robert, to Plain Pumps and Plain Okay. Um, there are two booster stations, right? Yes, you got you have the one on Chestnut Plain and Westbrook listed, but the new one that runs the center of town is not listed. What's the thing called? Put the thing called station just to confuse some new people. Yeah, though. You could. <laughs> well, that's right. I should have put it in somewhere else. <laughs> Keith, is the booster on Westbrook Road critical as well? Would you say? It is already listed, yes. I have Sorry. it in the, the file as a, um, but I didn't put it in the plan. It's it's listed. I know that. I read that. I might put it somewhere else. Okay. Is there anything else you can think of as far as? No, the only other comment was further in was I, well, I question why we do not list this building as a potential shelter. Was there was there a reason why? When I at this point I was waiting for a generator. Okay. I mean we can We're, list it as a shelter. Uh, Close. That was Where it's somewhat in the works. <laughs> Once it becomes okay, we'll we'll add right. it. So, um, the next section I had flagged was the um, hazardous materials facilities. Um, again, that would go kind of with the tier two stuff. So mm -hmm. I'll update that when it um, when I update the tier two information. Oh, uh, yeah, I keep up the section on that. Okay. But going back to the to the shelter aspect, I mean, you have the church listed with no generator there. I did, yeah. Why didn't I have it? And that's in the the file, right? It's not in this plan, right? Yeah, it's in the plan. It is. Okay. Yeah. Because for the shelters, you have the, the oh, library. Right. Yes. Libraries listed. The elementary school and the church were the only three buildings. Okay. And that's why I question why this one wasn't. Town Hall, though. Town Hall. Oh, Town Hall, oh, town hall was on there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's... I just think that. Let me get to another questionable. Section shelters. Okay. Um, the other thing with the shelters, I have a an article on is we need to assign somebody. So does anybody know a good candidate that would be good for organizing shelter? Well, six. No, not still program. I think we could tap, try and tap the public health and see whether who they have that could help us, like a nurse or something like that, just to get things, get things. 
referring to Mike. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. He's getting yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. So that is something that um, uh, should could be on the public health um, for the uh, for the town. You bet. Okay. Um, but also, you mentioned the Red Cross. Isn't that part? Of, I mean, Red Cross is, has a role to play in setting up shelters. It does matter what the emergency is. If, mm -hmm. um, if it's just something in Waitley, yes, the Red Cross can certainly help out. If it's something like region wide, mm -hmm. um, we will not take priority by the Red Cross. The Red Cross will most likely be working at regional shelters, which is another thing that we tend to do. Um, you know, if we only have two people that are going to be coming to a shelter, generally, and there's a regional shelter open, we would normally refer them to that regional shelter if they can get there, um, or we can help them get there. Uh, but if it was a Waitley incident like this, the tornado we had a while back, and we needed to set something Rainbow. up just for Waitley, then the Red Cross, we can certainly um, request um, from them. Uh, the Red Cross is they, they find cooperative. Your shelters. They try to find you a shelter. They find the a shelter, yeah. Yeah. But, right. Like with the fire at uh, Rainbow? Right. Yeah. But they also will do... Um, they, they will work on regional shelters. They'll staff regional shelters. Um, and perhaps they might staff a local shelter if that's all we have. I mean, I think that the fire was one of those instances where it wasn't town wide, so they weren't going to set up a shelter in Waitley right. for just right. the residents of the, at the hotel. Um, I think the other thing we have to think about is that we have to be self-sufficient in a lot of these things. Um, Many times, you know, people automatically expect that the the services are just going to flow in, and we're just going to have everybody here, which isn't necessarily the case. Um, so I think the most, if we can be somewhat self sufficient, and they actually do recommend that you need to be self sufficient for up to perhaps seventy two hours after an incident. So uh, I think that that's the approach we should take with this plan is trying to make sure we set ourselves up as best as possible. I don't know if that's how you folks feel or not, but. Yeah, I think we we, we definitely got to prepare for 72 hours. That's pretty much a standard before you're going to see any outside help coming in. And from what we've seen in our last emergencies is people uh, tended to want to stay at their homes anyways. They didn't really want to leave, their biggest concerns were somewhere to charge their phones and somewhere that they could get a hot meal. Uh, but when it came down to going someplace for the night, they and they were able to, they wanted to stay in their home. Um, you know, that isn't always the case. In our storms, it was because it was mainly the power that was out and people were, you know, without heat or electricity. And thank goodness most of the storms have been in when it hasn't been bitter cold or uh, really, really hot. So um, they were able to stay at home. Um, so I, I will add, I'll put, Mike, I'll put your name down as the person, the contact person at this point in time. Yes. Uh, and the, I'll just put, you know, the Board of Health or whatever, um, and then. I, I can, I, can I suggest that it, um, to put down specifically the, the Foothills Public Health Nurse? Okay, I will do that. I will put your name specifically. I will put just Foothills. That's who it is for now, but yeah, the Foothills Public Health Nurse. Okay. Oh, I think, yeah, here is where they're going to put in town offices. I think I had it in here at one point. I don't know why I took it out. Okay. I can put, um, 
evacuation rooms. To me, it doesn't make a lot of sense to put evacuation rooms in the plan, but they want you, they're very specific that they want those in there. Um, because you have no idea what the incident is going to be that causes you to evacuate and whether those evacuation routes will be valid at that point in time. So I just threw some in just to um, have it filled out. But that's certainly, you're just gonna have to evaluate this, the situation at the time and determine which way you're gonna evacuate. Okay. I think to, to your point, yeah, you just need to identify what should be the primary routes. Yeah. Potential yeah. routes yeah. Uh, that they should be focused on, but. That's a case kind of what I did. Yeah. We'll just leave it at that. Uh, they aren't set in stone. <laughs> let's put it that way. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, the rest of it, it wasn't an awful lot. Um, you know, it's basically the setup of the the plan. Uh, there are some, do we know of any private sector groups that we want to be involved in this? Valley neighbors. Valley neighbors. Anything else? Yeah, MRC. Um, I think it, they'll end up being under the um, oh. mm -hmm. government, maybe governmental organizations. Mm. Well, we'll see. Uh, yeah, let me put it down here, and I'll figure out which category it goes into. Um, what about the staff, the senior center? Is out mm -hmm. of the mm -hmm. If it's just something in Whaley, could they, they, I don't know, I'm just thinking that. Yeah. They might lend a hand to help. And I was, you know, a more during the day. I don't know that we have like a Lions Club or a, a I know Deerfield. The Rotary. Or There's a Lions Club in Deerfield. Deerfield. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Those are the types of things, but Valley Neighbors and we, I'll put MRC somewhere here in the senior center staff. Uh, and I'll have to get some contact information for some of those. So wait the end of the generator? No. no. I should tell you, there's no way to feed people here. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. We'll get you. Okay. And then um, I did the the EOC organization. It's on page 32. And I set this up. I was saying earlier that I didn't set it up like an ICS command, because most of the time in a Waitley emergency, we tend to compartmentalize per department. And like the chief of police handles his police officers, the fire chief handles the fire department, rather than doing it under an incident management system with the logistics and the operations and all that other stuff. Um, this seems to be the organization that we use when we have an emergency. However, it may not be the organization if we had to expand that emergency into something else. So I don't know if we want to list um, the usual ICS command system also as an alternative should the event expand. I think so. Okay, I'll put it that. That's what everyone's using. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
because you know, for for us, this seems to work well. If it's just weight length, then it's just that works well. But for the incident, the whole, you know, we have to we have to be familiar in both ways. Let's put it that way. Um, but the incident command system for one of our smaller emergencies doesn't quite work. It doesn't feel right. It just doesn't. Um, you know, you have a logistics officer, but that logistics officer has to look at everything. Um, whereas, you know, the each of the department heads would kind of be their logistics officer and they would also be their operations. So, uh, but I will add it and, ex and put an explanation that should the incident expand beyond Waitley, we will revert to the incident command system. Lynn, I, I think they usually just tell us that, that we should we should always um, say that we're implementing ICS because we, we really are, but we may not be filling every role at any given time. And I okay. think that might be easier than saying we're not gonna implement it until things go, you know, go long because um, I think that's, that's the kind of language that um like we know what it means but somebody else reading it may not know what it means and well, this was, I, part go ahead um this organization was one that was recommended by mima as well as the other organization with the logistics so mima actually presented this okay. in a template so yeah. i think there that they expect that there are some towns might use this setup more so yeah. than incident command setup. But I think you're right. You could still say that this is the incident command, but you know, we're operating under a departmental system rather than under logistics operations, preparing, you know, all the other categories. Right. So and and the, certainly the challenge for us being a smaller department is that if what we have is a major weather incident or a mass evacuation because of uh, some other incident, then our key players will be tied up, you know, in the initial phase mm. anyhow, and until we can sit down in a room together and um, come up with, you know, some goal, longer term goals and objectives and, right. um, and start gets, filling out the IPS reports. Yeah, and if it gets too bad, you're going to have um, other agencies coming in and, and helping out anyway. So, um, you know, once it gets, if an incident gets beyond our capabilities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, let's see what else there was here. Did anybody else find anything that they were questioning? Most of the rest of it was just what your responsibilities would be. Mm -hmm. I did get your uh, information, Fran, and I will add that. Mm -hmm. um, the plans and things. Great. Mm -hmm. Lynn, are you going to try and um, do a tabletop sometime this fall or this winter? Just so we can, you know, do like a scripted tabletop um, for an hour or something? Yeah, we, we should do that. The, that was the other topic I wanted to discuss is the, I think that we might be a little bit behind in some of our training for some of the staff. Um, I'm not sure how much uh, hazmat awareness training people have. Um, that sure. is something <laughs> that's something we can definitely use um, more of, but I could get somebody to come in from DFS pretty easily and um, do like an impact class for us. Um, Cause they used to offer it quite often, but I haven't really seen the hazmat awareness classes lately. Right. Um, and then I'll, even ICS classes, I mean, they are offering them, but um, I don't know if you have new firefighters that need to be updated in ICS. Um, the, our newer firefighters um, do, Sean got his basic ICS, you know, prior to doing the uh, fire academy. Okay. Um, so our, I think our, it's not so much an issue with our newer, brand new firefighters as it is 
people than on a few years. <laughs> yeah, it's a good it's a good winter class, but it's not the most exciting topic for folks. So um yeah, gonna have to temper it out a little bit. And we ought to sit down and decide at what level everybody should be at for ICS. Right. Um you know I I would guess that the fire in fire department should be at a level probably the 200 at least. Um you know, once you get up higher, it's more command sort of thing. So, um, I think but, I think the vast majority of our people have been been through uh, their one hundred and two hundred. Okay. And all well, that, yeah, the original was seven hundred and one hundred, right, or something. Like yeah, that, that was that the Yeah, yeah. Now it's. I think one, I, don't, I haven't even seen seven hundred, so I think they've gotten rid of that. Okay. So I think it's just one hundred and two hundred now. Um. What well, well, some. 362, I did. <laughs> they have a whole bunch yeah. of new specialized ICS yeah. classes, too. I mean, you've got specifics for uh, public information officers. You've got a specific for, you know, so yeah. there's like tons of classes out there, but the basics, we just need to have everybody. John and I took the PIO. Yeah. A couple, about two years and, ago. and I did the, uh, the basic and advanced. PIO class, Tulin. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've been up to the 400 and I've had the PIO. And, but I haven't taken any, I mean, of the more specialized classes. So I might take a few of those when they come up. Good. Um, so, okay. Let's see, what else do I have? Yeah, in the hazmat training, I think is probably something, I mean, I know I'm not. Um, certified in that anymore because I think it's every four years, two years, four years, and I think I took it about eight years ago. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, but that would be mainly highway, fire, uh, police, probably yeah. too. Uh, I'm going to say pretty much all of our guys did a refresh every single Okay, good. It was in the curriculum, so. Good. Yeah, because so you guys have this whole training program set up where you have to go through it every now and then, which, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, that helps a, a lot. Yeah. Um, the other question I had was the line of succession on page 46. It's basically... Um, they they have it as far as emergency management. Then they also have the line of succession for the chief municipal officer. So chief municipal officer would be the chair of the select board, vice chair of the select board, and then the clerk of the select board. And I guess Pete, you would be the number four. And I, you know, I hate to leave it at specifics because, you know, I hate to. Put a category that the chair of the select board is always the person that has to do this because it kind of in a small town like this, it's like <laughs> they may not be around. The same thing with me. I'm not quite sure. I mean, Alan is the assistant emergency management director. Oh, I was going to ask who is the assistant. <laughs> <laughs> but he had, I, mean, I haven't even. I didn't even invite him to this. I totally forgot. Um, but because Alan was going to be the he would have been the emergency management director when he was on the select board, right. but he um, really didn't want it. <laughs> so that's when I became the emergency management director. He said he'd be the assistant. So we kind of worked it that I would do the paperwork part of it, and he would do the management of a scene. <laughs> so, but yeah, I mean, he has been around for incidents and stuff like that, but we haven't um, there's been an awful lot going on so but I think it's still important to have that position. Uh I think that might be oh the internal messaging um they want a time frame in here and I, it kind of makes it doesn't make an awful lot of sense to me because Within a certain time frame of an emergency event, the EMD will submit a local government situation mm -hmm. report. I'm like, hmm. <laughs> um, 
to their, I mean, normally if we have an event, I go on web EOC and, and put the event on. Um, so the time frame seems a little, I might need clarification on that for the time frame on that. I take it though, web EOC is accessible to the regional email. Yeah, it's there. Yeah. It's there. Right. Yeah. And when you have an emergency, you can go on web EOC and put your emergency. They, they, I usually give them a call too because sometimes I don't know that they're always getting monitoring updates, yeah. everything. So I usually call my rep um, with, with MEMA and they uh, monitor there. So if we needed some assistance from, you know, we needed a bulldozer or something, we can actually put it on Web EOC and they'll help us locate. So, although Keith does a pretty good job at that. <laughs> um, the other thing, so I'm going to, I'll put in something, but I'm not quite sure. I want a little more clarification from BIMA on what they're expecting there. Oh, the alert notification. I don't, lately when I've been sending the 911 or the uh, reverse 911 calls out, um, only about 50% actually reach someone. Um, I think the problem is that there's two things. One, that people have gotten rid of the landlines and that's what I had in the system. and. Secondly, Verizon used to automatically upload, they automatically upload the numbers into, it was an arrangement that Connect CTY had, and they are not doing that anymore. Um, as you can see from the phone book lately, I think everybody's going to, to cell phones. What? So the, yeah, 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 I know. <laughs> like they don't do a phone book anymore. So I drafted up a, which I can send out at the same time as my other document, asking if they would like to change their phone numbers or whatever else and add an email address so that when we send out messages, yeah. um, people actually get it. Yeah. So uh, I, I've done it in the school, I've done it in phone messages, I've done it, but of course, People have tried to reach aren't <laughs> they aren't in the phone messages. Um, I've done it in my annual report and just asked people to update their information and I really haven't gotten anything. This I, might be another thing that would be good to do on Microsoft. Yeah. Yeah. I can do I, yeah. I don't you know, you know, have to worry about that and writing of yeah. Like, well, yeah. 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 Every aspect. yeah. Is there a text or email option? First, yeah. yeah, 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 that's what, yeah, I put the, uh, we had a message at the station. Oh, oh, oh yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, there is an email and you can text. The problem with the text on Connect CTY is you're limited to the characters. Yeah. It's doesn't, you don't get to put much. Um, I can't remember how many It's 140, it, I think. You know, it's at 140, but, but and so those can yeah. you put a link in there saying, hey, there's you can. a link to a website that that have a status yeah. page on the town website? Yeah. Yeah. Click here for That's it. what I usually, I didn't put the link in because I'm not that techie, but I did put, you know, for homepage. more information, check the homepage on the website. Um, or go, go to waitly.org for more information or something like that. Um, all tightly, tightly in there because <laughs> it doesn't allow for much. Um, let's see. While I'm scrolling through here, does anyone have any ideas for my uh, my EMPG grant? Oh, you. I have twenty seven hundred dollars. That basically all I have to do is apply I, the day. First. I think if Keith, are you due for another voltage? Um, safety indicator there, the proximity uh, voltage indicator that you have. I have not replaced the battery in the one I have to know if 
The last time when I remember. So it sounds like unique one. Well, oh, then there's a oh, battery, yes. Sure if it's well, viable, we... but there's none for the fire department that, that have those. Yeah. Basically, what it is is you, and it wouldn't even be bad for the police department, too, is when you, you get on a scene for potential power lines down, things like that, is you unzip it. It's a little pouch, and you, once you open it, it'll then detect any, as you encroach voltage, it'll, it'll go up and it'll alert. So if there's a power line down that you're not aware of. And it's live. And it's live, it will alert you to it. Um, I That's don't recall good. those, the value of those. It's a few hundred dollars, three, four hundred dollars a piece, maybe. Okay. I can get more information to you with that. That sounds like a pretty good option. <clears throat> that could definitely be something that the police department and the fire department could have as well. I'll just have to check to make sure it's an item on the center. Okay. I'm pretty sure it would be, but um, so. So is there anything else from the Board of Health standpoint? I What I sent you this information, I said it's kind of not terribly Board of Health directed, but um, I think it can apply to a health-related situation as well. Very, tr very true. And thanks. Um, thanks for the invite. Um, it was, um, it was um, really um, helpful for me. Um, I've, I've found myself now on the um, chair of the Mohawk Area Public Health Coalition, uh, which is working with uh, FERCOG and the, the, the HMCC there where it gets the FEP grants um, for a lot of the emergency planning. So um it's you know great to see much more of the nuts and bolts rather than what i've been hearing about <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. very helpful very helpful okay so i guess the other thing is the the takeaways here is i'll i'll update these i want to get out my mailings we'll set it up in a um uh, online i'll adjust this to indicate that they can go to the website to do a survey or something. Um, I will also update the plan information uh, for the plans that uh, Brand talked about in his email. I will, um, let's see, what was the update? And then we need to do training. I have to schedule some training for, um, if people can get me how many people they think might need like a hazmat awareness level um, training and ICS training, then I can work at setting up. I think some ICS is now done online. What? Yeah, so, basically it's all online. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. they still have in-person ones too, but um, I think a lot of it is done online. So. Are these trainings free or is there a cost that maybe we can help? Most of the time. Okay. Yeah. So I was like, if there's a cost, maybe the grant could help cover some of the training. Or is it, it just could, the capital? Uh, the grant could actually cover, um, if we wanted to do a tabletop, uh, it would cover the cost related to that so, tabletop. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and it's yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, but I, I tend to use the grant more for equipment because yeah. that seems to be the, the greater need. Um, another part in here is records retention information, um, where we keep all of our records and how we keep them. So I've got to put that, and that was another thing that Fran had um, let me know on the Board of Health Records. So I didn't, I didn't up that, date that yet because I did want to talk to Amy a little about um, I know she's I know she's got all the paper records, but the, is there anything that's electronic? That kind of stuff. I know that the uh, birth and death records are electronic, so but we'll have to narrow that down a little bit more. So I got to talk to sit and chat with Amy. Uh, so for him, the mutual aid. Do we have any other mutual aid agreements besides the um, uh, 
Let's see, I have the FERCOG mutual aid agreement, the tri state. Oh, we still have tri state, right? Um, you still have a highway department mutual aid agreement? Yeah, it's there's the three equipment, it's through Mass Highway, Mass, Mass Highway Association. Okay, Highway. It's not statewide. Western Mass Police Mutual Aid. Okay. That's all the blue downs. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I will add those to the mutual aid section. Um, is uh, the Foothills a shared services sim similar? I'll put that. Yeah, I'm going to put that on here too. Um, yeah, I, I sent that. Mm -hmm. This computer jumps all over the place so it tries to block. Yeah, and then I highlighted the first responder awareness level because we, we do want to make sure that people are. And do you know what version is the latest um, orange book? Oh, they just came out with this 22, maybe? Oh, no, I think it just was it. I got it. I actually have it on. Yeah, I have it on my phone now. We've got them at the station too, but you're right that most of us just use the phone app. Okay. Yeah. All right. I just like to have one, you know, paper version. <laughs> yeah, you can download the ERG app. Yeah, I've got that on my phone. I I'll get you a paper one, Lynn. <laughs> usually, usually they came to be, and this does say 2024. So. Um, Usually they came to me, and then the, the last one I have is 2020. So, not that <laughs> everything's changed all that much. But it's yeah. So, I don't know. Uh, the other thing is we have awareness level, we have operations level. What level do we want? Who do we at? Yeah, we've had some at operations in the past. It's good to probably have a few people in each couple highway, at least couple of uh, fire all in the operation level. You get the ones in the highway department, they're already in the fire, please. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, and I don't know. So I also sent along the um, the tag tables of all the different facilities. Mm -hmm. um, if I will go, we have do have to be out of here by six, so I won't go through that. Um, but each page is a different category, and if you can look through that and see, I think the tier two reports will help us out there. Um, but if you look through that, see if any. I I know I'm missing stuff. So I'm looking for you guys to kind of tell me what I'm missing. Um, so if you can look through that and just let me know what I need to add, that would be helpful. Like that's it, it, each of the pages looks kind of like this. So like this is the um, this is a facilities. It's got factories, gas stations, restaurants, food service, that kind of stuff on it. And this one is uh, the farms. I added all the farms, local farms. And this one is, I think, community facilities. It's got the cemetery church, that kind of stuff on it. So if you look through, there's one page for each of the categories. If you look through and you find something that's missing, let me know. I know that I didn't put like they stay blasting on there. Um, I don't have their information. So are they still operational? Yeah, they, they are. That's something I can I can get for you. And then the other thing I wanted to throw out there is that new software that we're just starting to work with, um, LIV, um, is going to help with the tier two reporting and gathering those, um, building a better database of those um, businesses and also making that information accessible to a lot of different people um, if the need arises because it's all cloud-based. Okay, that sounds good. Okay. Um, did anybody have any other information or want to add anything to the plan that they felt was missing or? Okay. 
Here, I'll give you a view of uh, one of the Erie Canal locks here. This is yeah, lock door. <laughs> lock doors are to the left there, and uh, the hydros to the right, both sides mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. So you're going through the locks? Yeah. 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 Are you They're going terminal. northward to Oswego? Uh, Perhaps <laughs> um, that's no, we're actually that's the Champlain one. We've done that one, but we're just uh, east of Niagara right now. Oh, OK. About uh, yeah. 20 miles from Niag Niagara. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how long does it take to go through one of the locks? Um, it depends on the locks, but generally uh, 20 minutes, something like oh, that, 20 okay. minutes. Sometimes you have to wait for other traffic. You know, there might be commercial traffic. They'll get priority or boats mm -hmm. coming down or whatever. But yeah. Um, I should be back in town in another uh, seven or eight weeks, I think. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we're we doing the Panama Canal in April. So I'm kind of looking forward to that. Nice. Sounds good. I'll, uh, I'll let you guys go. Lynn, I will follow up with you on those um, items and, um, and Keith with you as well. Okay. okay. All right. Very thanks. So I think that's, did anybody have anything else? Not even, it doesn't have to be related to the plan, but it. Well, I know Jim said he's working on the school safety plan, okay. but he wasn't going to, he was going to keep it out of this report, this mm -hmm. plan. So okay. Yeah, I, I was, what I was hoping to do is once I get this plan done, and uh, I'll, the coup plan is there, I just have to read make sure everything's up to date in it. And any other plans that we want to um, have as appendixes, I may not necessarily send them to MEMA, but we would have them here. I want to put them all on a thumb drive for people. They can access it however they want to at that point, you know, if they want to load it to the cloud on their part. Um, but I want to have all the plans in one place. Uh, all the tier reporting in one place so that we aren't all over the place. Um, and let's see, there's uh, the uh, natural hazards plan. There's the, you know, there's a whole bunch of other plans that have been developed through FERCOG that probably ought to be appendixes to this plan as well. I also have all the emergency action plans for all the dams. Um, so I went to a meeting, uh, a tabletop exercise at GCC maybe a month ago, um, for the Harriman Dam. Uh, it was, uh, JP was there actually for part of it. Um, it was, it was very interesting. And, you know, we have an inundation plan, uh, maps and everything for if the Harriman Dam goes. Harriman, Sherman, and the other one, there's three dams there. Can't think of the other one's name, but um, small form, huh? small form, no. uh, not no, that's that well, small. it might be called a different name. Yeah, there's two in Vermont, and there's yeah. one in, in Mass. But um, it's probably one they call Bear Small Form. Yeah. So, uh, but if Harriman goes, then we're in deep So, uh, you know, basically River Road, and we have 30 minutes. To evacuate. Okay, if you're What's that? If we go inside the dam, really? This is where we're going to try to carry the guys. Those are interesting. You go in. So, did they feel secure? Actually, Got a huge glory hole. Cool. <laughs> uh, Shelter's at 30. We're at like a, almost an hour. Yeah, That's I was right. going to say, we yeah. can go under. Shell, shell, I was with Shelburne when we were doing the plan. That's why I said 30. Um, we're closer to the hour. Um, and River Road would be pretty much. Go, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Long Plain, it doesn't go up as high as Long well, Plain. So you just have to evacuate River Road and the accessory roads that are on that lower tier, you know. But, <laughs> so Head west. Yeah. Head west. That's why the evacuation plans. Which no. way? <laughs> what do you do? Do I do north and south? No. <laughs> Go west. So um, it was a pretty informative uh, tabletop sort of exercise. Um, the, I found it interesting that there weren't upstream, there weren't a lot of people there. 
you know, the ones that would be affected, I guess maybe they're just saying. <laughs> Write us off already. <laughs> write us off. <laughs> you, have, you only have 15 minutes or 10 minutes. Well, yeah, some of them. What are we going to do? <laughs> some of them, it's like five minutes and yeah. they're, they're gone. So, um, but it was really interesting. Uh, it was a good tabletop. Uh, it was, you know, they handed scenarios to you. They gave you a scenario to begin with, which is what they usually do. And then during it, they throw you some extra scenarios. Um, so it, it was pretty good. Yeah, most of the people there were, there weren't a lot of Vermont towns. Like Reedsboro wasn't there. They're like ground zero. <laughs> so, but, um, and, and, and like I said, I know that over the years I haven't been really on top of all the stuff I'm trying to do. <laughs> Did you say you had 2,700? 2,700, yeah. Well, just a quick search. Um, the personal voltage detectors are in the 450. I'd have to research it a little bit more, but they're, they range, there's a range, depending on how sort of probably the quality and how, what yeah. the range is on it. But that would give us six. Yeah. I don't do that, but we'll get a little bit more information. I, I've got to get the, I think October, I can't remember the date. It's October something. I have to get the, good to have a couple of the, definitely the police department. A couple of fire, fire trucks. And fire trucks. And one in, in highway. Well, I definitely let me make sure mine may still be functional because they're, they're mental. How old is it, Keith? Four years, maybe. Oh, oh. okay. Oh, I'm, not, I'm, thinking, I'm thinking it's like. Oh no, they're not. I got okay. them with a some type of grand I got them from oh, once. Okay. I showed them the JP, and they worked. It worked fine, and but now the like I could say the battery. It's in a specialized it, battery. I have never taken it apart. To check it. I need to do that. Um, the other thing we can do is I don't know if all the. All radios are, everybody's got radios, everybody's got, is there anything that's needed there? Let's build a radio. I mean, <laughs> you draw the line. In, that, in, in fact, <laughs> the, um, Frank, the county has a, like limits. They're not going to allow every town to go and buy right. an umpteen them up. And it's been there. Oh I, oh, I know. So that. That's part of the issue. I mean, not every firefighter in Franklin yeah. County and in other towns have them. I mean, oh, I know. Because I had to go that way when I got mine. And so, they, I just I wanted to buy it at the price. You know, I didn't want to just buy something. Yeah. I wanted to buy it at the price that they were being offered. Mm -hmm. So I contacted Dan and he, he gave me all the information and said it wasn't a problem at that point in time. But um, no, I know there's a limit because they don't want to overload the system again. Um, we, did, um, have... we, we do have um, uh, a, a translator coming from, uh, a real-time translator coming from MAFCO um, that um, is available for the town. Um, I haven't picked it up yet. It's up at the Fur Cog, but it's um, you know real time translation and just some 119 languages, um, some crazy thing like that. But um, uh, I, I got to go up and pick that up at the Fur Cog and get it to the town offices. Oh, that sounds uh, great. Asian Creole. <laughs> 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 I'm, 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 that's on the list. I'm pretty sure that's on the list. You guys need to carry one of those around. I do. I see yeah. that there's some phones that will yeah, do that now yeah, that yeah. you can. Yeah. So technology. So okay. So I guess we can. If there's nothing else we can adjourn, yeah. and I work on this, and I'll send out the final draft, and then we have to submit it to the select board for their approval. Um. So the only part that I'm still I'm gonna probably just guess at as far as the excessive accessible. Oh, or lack of accessible yeah. people. Um, and I'll just kind of look at special my, concerns. The special concerns, yeah. I'll just look at the list that I have. I know. 
kidding. Uh, so, uh, but I'll look at the list and then I, you know, from people that I do know, I can kind of. Could you take the timeline timeline that was done and get a, get a percentage of the population oh, and, and, yeah. and just yeah. move that yeah, forward based probably. on the percentage? Yeah. I mean, this pretty is, close. No one's going to be saying right. it would be right where that number comes from. It's going to be in the exactly. back. Room, so. Yeah. So, okay. I think then that's it. All right. Uh, All right. Thanks. Have a good evening. <laughs>